Hi and welcome to Theat Gaming and what I'd like to do in, is, uh, in this video is to explain the, uh, this is heralding the live action battle reports that are about to come to the channel. Um, we've completed the first one which is an Age of Sigma Maggot King of Nurgle against Flesh Eater Courts, 2000 points. That will be coming out on Saturday lunchtime UK time. And what I thought I would do is to go over our rationale for it, go over what we can do and what we can't do, because what I'm going to be looking for is a lot of feedback. Um, but, uh, and I'll give any feedback you feel like it, but there will be some feedback that will be more useful than others. The purpose of this video is to explain what the constraints are, uh, what I would like to do and so on. So the battle report itself runs to a little over two hours. That is a lot longer than it is for normal. And um, part of that will be to do with the fact that we have got lessons to learn. I've certainly got lessons to learn in terms of when you're in filming mode, and when you're in playing mode, um, there are different ways of doing it. And one reasonably common way is that everything is recorded on a camcorder. It's essentially handheld. It may be on a rig, but it's essentially handheld and you record all the, the goings on there. That works pretty well because it's then relatively easy to um, chop out things like the movement phase, charge phase, and, and so on. The downside to it, apart from the fact that I don't think I'd be all that brilliant at just handling uh, that on a regular basis is, you know, trying to roll your dice when you're doing that. Um, yes, you know, people obviously get used to it and practice with it. I just don't like it. Um, and it will take a lot of practice. Now I may be forced to do this as well because I've edited the first one now and it took quite a few hours. It would take fewer hours with better practice because there were certain things, for example, see the way we're doing it is um, there's two camera angles. The first one is sort of an elevated view of the whole battlefield. Unfortunately, space being what it is, I can't have a top down one because that may be what some people say, Cut the ceiling's too low. Uh, actually tried it. I even had a wide angle lens, because that would be what people say, wide angle lens. I did try that, I do have one. And yeah, you could fit it in with horrendous spherical aberration. Uh, so that's a non-starter. So this view is the only view I can get of the overall battlefield. Um, the other view is the handheld one, purely for explaining deployment movement and charge phase. Now, where we went wrong, or where I went wrong, it's my fault, is sometimes if it's like, um, there was two areas where I went wrong. First of all, I'd get the camera to record the movement and I'd be saying, right, now that the movement phase has been completed, or some words to that effect, and I'm still swinging the camera. So I had to cut into there. So that was less than ideal. I need to get myself in a position where I've got the camera ready, I'm looking at something, and then I start speaking. And we need to get into that habit because sometimes a movement, you might just move a thing or you make with charges, you might just charge a thing um, and you just do that. And you, I, I just need to get into the habit of at the end of the hero phase or command phase or psychic phase, it would be, uh, no, command phase still. Um, but whatever, with its 40k or age of sigma, when I'm about to start the movement phase, just stop, get the movement done, then get the camera in position, then start recording, explain that. Do the same thing with the charge phase. Because the charge phase is a bit more complicated. It's a bit like, you want to roll the dice for that. You don't necessarily need to show people run rolls or advanced rolls, but charge rolls, a bit more interesting. So you want to show that. Um, and then you'll want to show any impact hits or anything like that afterwards, or overwatch in 40K, something like that. So, you know, that will be a case of, um, show those on the main camera view, then, move the charges, then show where they're finished up, then back to the other camera view for the impact hits. With, eventually we will get better practiced at that um, and that will work better. But in terms of the constraints we have, you know, the room, it's a nice room um, and it's, it's good size to be playing games on, but it's not loads of room. I can't, to, to get good views, you need the camera set up some distance away, can't do that. Everything's fairly close in. Um, but, and, and the sound is another one. Now, I'm always worried about sound when I record. So I've recorded for some time. Um, and the, the my, I had various options. The best option was the freestanding microphone, basically in a corner of the room. And it picks up pretty well. The only problem is it also picks up the occasional creaking of the floor or shuffling of chairs and things like that, or even feet on the floor. So 
Uh, I do have various thoughts about that. I don't know how realistic those thoughts are. The sound will be something that it will be difficult to do anything about immediately, but that will be a work in progress. And people will say things like, oh, the lapel microphones and things like that. Um, I did try that and there's downsides to that as well. I know some people do use it quite well. There were downsides to it. I don't rule it out, but there are downsides. Uh, well, actually, one downside is I only have one and I don't know how, and I like it, I don't know how to get a second one that I could record at the same time. So I may have to get a second one of those and, and affix that to a different camera. That might work, that could work. Um, I may do that, that may be something I try. But the sound is what it is for now. I wouldn't expect that to change for a good month or so, but it may change this summer. Um, I, I, you know, the, the You'll see as well behind me, I'll show you some footage behind me of how it's sort of looking as well. Because the other thing is um, choosing to show victory points and commandments. It did go wrong a bit, actually. There was one point in it and I couldn't work out where it was. I forgot to change the, the command points at a certain point in the game was wrong on what I was showing. Um, but it just would have taken too many hours <laughs> to go back and try and find it. So that needs uh, sorted. But that I, again, lessons learned on that one. But um, yeah, in terms of the overall view, I don't know what people would think of this. Uh, that's what I'm thinking at the moment. I'll tell you where I think immediately there could be the most change. And indeed there may be regardless of any feedback, but this is where feedback's particularly welcome. So there will be aspects of design. Like there are things I'd love to do with it um, that will just take too much time. At the moment, this thing took me about three and a half hours to edit. I, it won't take that long next time, I hope. Um, but it took about three and a half hours to edit. That editing time will come right down. I'll tell you where the reason why it took that long is because I had to virtually watch the whole footage to work out where to cut. As soon as we get better practiced at only saying what we need to say in each phase, I can basically zoom past each phase knowing full well I don't have to do any little cuts. In like If I have to cut things out in the middle of a phase, that's where it takes longer. Once we get practiced and more professional from that point of view, that time will come right down. It'll just be a case of stitching the phases together. That'll be a lot easier. But until that happens, it's taken a very long time to edit. And there are things I'd like to layer onto it that I don't have the time to do, but I may do later. But again, any ideas, put them in, even if they're ideas I've already had. I mean, bear in mind, myself and Star, the guy I'm playing with, uh, we've both watched a lot of battle reports on a lot of different channels. So we have ideas about what we think works and what doesn't, uh, and we'll carry on talking about that. But again, people may have actually unique ideas. Uh, and then there's things that some people will like and some won't. So the top and tail of it, I would say. I haven't made a great show of introducing the armies in it. I've put the army lists in the description. I haven't really introduced it too much. Uh, some people would like us to go through the army list on the footage and some people may not. Some people may like us to go through it in detail and explain the reasoning behind it and some people may not. So I'm working on the principle that people don't want that, they don't want it and if people do, well it's not necessarily going to put them off the battle report because of the, the army list is available. Towards the end, it might be interesting to have a discussion about what went on with the battle. Uh, that could be useful. Again, don't know. At the moment, it would have just made the video too long. Uh, would that be better as a separate video? The problem then is it's a separate video which someone may happen across and go, oh, to watch this, I need to watch the battle report. Oh, I can't be bothered. Um, so there's, there's various issues there. I mean, one the idea I had and then instantly dispelled was the notion you could do as a standalone video a debrief but you would have to pick out footage from the battle report itself so that you didn't have to have watched the battle report to know what I was talking about. That'd take a hell of a long time. <laughs> if there's gonna be any sort of uh, spin offs so to speak, from the battle reports, they have to be incredibly quick to do um, because the battle report itself takes a long time. Now, the final thing I'll just say for now, and as I say, I will follow, when we've done a few more battle reports, I will sort of follow this up as well uh, to see how things are going. But uh, I suppose a couple of little things. Into various rules are changing. So uh, with 40K, Adeptus Sororitas coming out. I have an Adeptus Sororitas army. So I'll be using that, uh, but it won't come out like it might on some channels on the day 
the codex comes out, because the day the codex comes out is the day I'll get it. I may not even get it that day. I may get it two days later if it's delayed. Um, but so realistically, the battle report for Adeptus Sororitas will come out two weeks after, because we need time to read the book and work out a list um, and so on. I think actually, because I'll be using that, I think Star has a really beardy list for me for that. Um, but anyway, um, where there might be a bigger difficulty is with the Age of Sigma, because it's going to a new edition at some point. And we may get to a position where obviously there'll be no point in us record, let's say it was the, that week for Age of Sigma, and, and at the end of that week, say, uh, third edition's coming out. There's no point in filming that, because then on the day third edition is coming out, we'd be releasing a video, a battle report for second edition. What's the point? So it may well be, depending on how Games Workshop time it, that we end up with, say, a couple of 40k battle reports in a row. Not sure. I'd, I'd prefer not, actually, because in terms of the armies I have, by the end of the year, I will, because I've got a lot of, you know, uh, fingers in pie, so to speak, I'll have a good variety of armies for both Age of Sigma and 40k. Right now, there's a decent select. Well, there's four for each, which is reasonable. Star has a, a couple as well for both Age of Sigma and uh, 40k. But by and large, uh, the 40k will take longer to get up to a, a, ver a good variety. Whereas the Age of Sigma will come more quickly, at least initially. They both have their several months of downtime before I get a new one. But the Age of Sigma will get ahead, whereas the 40k one... Um, starts off in a position and, and then has to wait before. Basically, the armies I've got now are the armies I've got until about at least mid-August. At least mid-August. Um, or maybe early August if they're a bit quicker. So, uh, yeah, so I'd prefer probably not to use those up. But again, alternating each week should be fine. On that point, you know, I know someone when I talked about this before did say it'd be good to have one of each each week. Age of Sigma 4K? Yeah, it would. <laughs> yeah, it would. Um, but there's time. It takes a long time to, to play it, and it will take even longer. Th We've only played an Age of Sigma one so far, and we need to train ourselves to be better. What really needs to happen to cut down the time, the dead time, is, and I, we, I knew this before, but again, it's just getting into the habit. We're just getting into the habit of playing when we need to get into the habit of filming. What you really want to do is, before you start a phase, before you start doing that phase, uh, and talking about it, you want to work out what you want to do. So there's no one with an R in the battle report. The battle report I've done, I've tried to cut some of it out, but it's there. And that's one of the things I mean about the time. Um, you want to cut that out. Work out what you want to do. Work out what spells you want to cast. Work out which charges you want to do in advance. Yes, you may have to think on the fly if things don't go your way. That's fine. But at least try and work out what you can in advance before you're uh, into the actual footage. Um, for 40k, it would be much more so. Because for each phase, you'll have all the stuff you'd have to do for Age of Sigma. Plus, you've got there's a lot of stratagems. You've got to sit there making sure you're not missing out a really good stratagem. And when you're using multiple armies, we can't become experts in them. We're not playing them often enough. Um, we don't want the same matchup each each fortnight. So, you know, we're not going to be that familiar with str some stratagems that are used a lot, sure. But then there's more niche ones that could save your life on one time. And you forget about it. So you, we're going to have to spend the time in there. It's going to take a long time to actually play the 40k one. Um, and then there's the time to edit it as well. You know, so doing two in a week, not realistic. Not realistic. Not saying never, but certainly not anytime soon. So it will be alternating each week. But it will be coming out, as I say, UK time 12 noon on Saturday. Um, so give it a view, see what you think. It will be very rough and ready. I will warn you now, it will be very rough and ready. But hopefully it'll be refined. Hopefully the 40k one following on from that, um, Death Watch against Death Guard will be better. And then after that, I think Star's bringing Cinch and I'm going to use my Daughters of Cain for Age of Sigma. That should be better still. Um, you know, I would expect rapid improvement, as you always will when you start from a low base, rapid improvement over the next few weeks. And then maybe it's more of a case of consolidating and thinking about more minor tweaks that might take longer. But there's sort of my rationale on it. Uh, there's some of my thinking about various things. Uh, there will be improvements that I just can't do because I don't have the resources. Um, there will be improvements I'm resisting doing that I may have to do or I may not. Uh, and there will be improvements that uh, Star and I have already realized we need to do and we will do them. But then there may be ones that you have thought of that we have not thought of and they 
They are the needles in the haystack we're looking for. So uh, any and all comments, please. Uh, particularly when you, I mean, you could put them down here just as a, as a general thing, or you could put them in the battle report when it comes out on Saturday. Um, but thanks for listening anyway, and until next time, and I'll see you later.